Today we have a little bit of a more casual style video. The reason for that is I'm trying to make videos that don't take me like a month to edit, first of all. And second of all, life hasn't gone exactly to plan lately for me. I was supposed to be flying back today from Italy from a holiday that I was um, that I had planned. And the day before I was supposed to go, I caught the plague. <laughs> Most important thing is I'm, I'm doing better now. We also have 20,000 people on the channel now. Like, what? <laughs> I don't even know, like 20,000 people. How many people is that? Like, what does that look like? I have no concept. It just feels like a lot, you know? And I think each and every one of you, the reason I talked about my holiday was because during my holiday I was supposed to be filming a Q&A, so obviously that didn't happen yet, but it's going to happen once I go. So if you have any questions that you would like me to answer, like if you are remotely interested in what I, like me and what I have to say for some reason, then feel free to drop your questions down in the comments below or send me a message on Instagram or send me an email or like just however you prefer to read me just don't come to my house please i'll take your questions and i'll do a type of vlog slash come on holiday with me which i'm hoping is a little bit more entertaining than just sitting down on the floor answering questions so if you're interested at all yeah just send your questions across to me and i'll do that but for today we are going to be ranking detoxes and i feel like if you've watched my previous videos you already know what to expect but basically we have our little tier list the different ranks that i have here so the top one that's the stuff it's like the creme de la creme this is basically the things that work and that are not scams and that have some science behind them then we have the not magical but hurting nobody these are the ones that are claimed to do a million things and maybe they actually don't do a million things but also if you do them you're not harming yourself and then we have the kind of sus rank the kind of sus is like a limbo you know they're not total scams like they do something but they can be harmful for you. So that's the kind of sus uh, tier right there. Then you have the money grabs. These are the ones that really don't do what they say they will do for you. So they just get you to spend your money and they basically don't do anything. And then finally, we have the not on my watch. The nicest way I can put it is between not doing anything, like doing nothing and doing these things, I would rather you do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> because they probably harm you more than they help. So that's our rank list and let's get started. So first we have lemon water. Lemon water is like miraculous, right? Because there's nothing that lemon water doesn't do really. So I feel like we need to sort of go back to basics and unpack it. There's two ways that people can make lemon water. Either they squeeze the juice of the lemon into the water or they slice lemons and they put the slices in the water. Either way, uh, I think that we can still agree that it's still lemon and water. So whatever lemons do and whatever water does, lemon water does. Like combining the two things doesn't change the properties of either one. Before making this video, I asked you if you had any questions or if you were curious about any kind of detoxes and I got a few comments. One of them asked, does lemon water make your body more alkaline? I think the best way is to try and follow the path of what happens at every step of the way when you drink lemon water. So we've established that lemon water is basically water and lemons, right? Lemon is an acidic fruit. It has a pH of between two and three. And water in its purest form has a pH of around seven, which is neutral. The final product, the lemon water, will be eventually an acid. It could be anywhere between two and seven. So where does this claim that lemon water makes your body more alkaline come from? So basically when you eat or drink something, it goes through your system, it's metabolized, and then eventually it reaches your liver and your kidneys. These two organs have the function to basically filter whatever goes into your bloodstream and what gets expelled, usually through your pee. And so what's important to know is that our blood is very tightly controlled in terms of pH. It has a strict pH range of between 7.35 and 7.5. 4-5 where it can range in between and if you go literally slightly outside of these ranges you can get severely ill and you may even die it's really that tightly controlled so in basic terms whenever you eat or drink something if there is excess acid or excess 
alkalinity, then that excess is expelled through your pee. So there is no way that lemons or any other food or drink alter the pH of your body because the pH is so tightly regulated that anything in excess Anything that could throw that off is basically thrown out. So the whole deal with lemon water basically goes back to the fact that it is an acidic drink. However, when it gets metabolized by the body, by the time it gets to the kidneys, there's alkaline byproducts that are expelled through your pee. Your pee will be alkaline. So that's why people say that it alkalines, alkaline, alkalinizes, alkalines your body. However, it doesn't really change the pH of your body as we've established. As for all the other claims that lemon water has, all I can really say is that it's lemon and water again. So any benefits that lemon has, lemon water has. Any bef benefits that water has, lemon water has because it's like 90% water. So for that reason, we are going to put lemon water in the not magical but hurting nobody pile. Because in the end, if you're drinking water, that's all that matters. So if adding lemon to your water, any sort of flavor to your water gets you to drink water, hey, drink your water. Next we have celery juice. I'm not going to go into the medical medium sort of thing. What we just talked about lemon water applies. Celery juice is celery and water juiced. That's it. You juice an apple, you juice a banana, you juice celery. It's the same thing. It's juicing a fruit. If it helps you get more fruits and veggies in your diet by drinking celery juice, uh, go for it, be my guest. Yes, celery has a lot of nutrients, it has antioxidants, it's great, but it does concern me when there is a whole cult around any kind of food. It doesn't have to be celery, you know? I don't have beef with celery. I have beef with people using any kind of food isolated saying calling it like a powerful elixir or calling it a, a, a power food or, or whatever making claims behind it saying that it can cure your arthritis it can cure your cancer it just becomes dangerous and it's not dangerous because drinking celery juice is is bad for you, that's not the problem. The problem is these cults tend to attract people who are desperate. Imagine that you have cancer or you have chronic disease and you've tried everything, you've gone to doctors and no one can give you an answer. And then suddenly someone comes along and tells you, oh my god, you just need to try this celery juice. It fixed my whole life. And you start drinking the celery juice and you become so much of a believer that because it's natural and because it has all these nutrients and because there's so many people preaching for it that you just start juicing your celery every day and you stop looking for any other treatments that are scientifically backed. There's other videos done by other creators that really talk about the wellness industry and how it profits off of people who feel like they can't trust in conventional medicine and that's my problem with celery juice. Also celery can have interaction with cer certain medications and drugs. Celery juice, I'm going to put it on the kind of sus pile. It's just a juice made out of celery. So it's not bad per se, but it can be if uh, under the wrong circumstances. Oh, by the way, did I mention that lemon water really doesn't detox anything out of your body? That's probably <laughs> the main thing. We're talking about detoxes and I'm getting derailed, but your liver and your kidneys are doing that for you. Celery juice also doesn't detox anything. I'm sorry. I know that we have been sold this idea that our bodies are like a pipe and somehow if you just pour a gallon of bleach into the pipe, it's going to get all squeaky clean, but that's not how our bodies work. Have you ever stopped and asked the person who's selling you these detoxes, what toxins are they aiming to clean out of you? Because I've never had anyone tell me by the name what these toxins are. So that's something to think about. On a lighter note, we have a mental health detox. Uh, yes, this is going straight into the that's the stuff pile. A mental detox is where you feel like your head is just full of negative thoughts and confusion and you just don't feel well and you just take time to change that. So whether it's through gratitude, meditation, turning off the news, going on a 
peaceful mind journey for a week, a month, a weekend, whatever it is, I support that because mental health is very important. Mental health is health and whatever we have to do to keep the attic clean, we gotta do that. So that's the stuff, no question about it. So that was an easy one. And now we have another one, which is detox meal plans. So I looked into Saqqara and they have like a level one meal plan, which is basically a weekly plan of meals. You pay for a week full of meals, you get your meals and you just eat that throughout the week. And it seems like all the meals are super good and super nutritious. They do say, that uh, their nutrition philosophy is that they give you 200% of your fiber intake needs. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure why they're advertising this as a really good thing because having too much fiber literally either gives you the runs or ties your gut in a knot. And God forbid if you have Crohn's disease. <laughs> this is just the one flaw that, that jumped out to me. The other flaw is that each weekly meal plan sets you back $349 per week. How much is that? That's $1,400 worth of food every month. I'm sure Gwyneth Paltrow doesn't have a problem with that, but as a normie, um, it kind of, I kind of do. You know, I can't really say it's a money grab because it's just healthy meals. I will put it on the not magical, but hurting nobody. If you can't afford it, then it's not really hurting you, is it? Unless you have Crohn's disease, but you know. And another reason why I don't put it in the kind of sus pile is because it doesn't really detox you per se, but in order for your organs to function well, to be able to detox your body for you, you need to be in a good state of health. And having nutritious meals with all the nutrients, you know, all the good things and colors and, and flavors and stuff, it's promoting good health for you. So in that sense, um, that, that's why it's going to stay there. Then we have the other end. Sakara has a five day detox plan where it's almost the same as the weekly plan. However, it's also accompanied by supplements and teas and stuff that they throw in to detox your body for a week. So it's $400 for five days worth of meals. They have their own brand of detox water drops, which is basically liquid chlorophyll. I have a video about just liquid chlorophyll on my channel. And then they also throw in some supplement pills with some vitamins and minerals and whatnot for the morning and one for the evening, all those kind of things. What is my problem with this? It's not the fact that it costs $400, although as we have established, uh, I would not pay for. The problem I have with this is that these one week detox plans give you the false sense of security that if you just spend your entire year, 305, how many days are in a year? Yeah, you spend 360 days a year eating nothing but fried chicken and burgers and fries and pizza, you know, anything else that's not considered healthy or nutritious and then you do a five-day detox and that fixes everything i would say that's worth the 400 dollars wouldn't you except that it doesn't because that's not how our body works your body doesn't reset week on week your body works on an average basis so if you spend 95 percent of the year eating not very nutritious food not exercising not drinking water you're not going to fix it in five days you're just not. Because on average, you spend the entire year doing that. So because of that, I will put this one on the kind of sus money grab, kind of sus money grab. I will, uh, I'll put it on the money grab one. Some of those supplements that they throw in, some of them make sense, but my general stance on supplements is that they are called supplements because they are meant to supplement. As in, if you don't have enough of that specific mineral or vitamin in your diet, but they are just prescribing these supplements to everyone. They just assume that everyone is deficient in good gut bacteria. There's no way they can know that because they're not asking people for their blood tests. So this one is going on the money grab pile. So next up, we have social media detoxes. Uh, that's the stuff. I will not be the first, will not be the last to say that social media screws with your head. If you need to turn off your phone, turn off that phone. Turn off those news notifications because hello, the world is scary today. And sometimes we just get so much 
like so involved in the world inside the internet sometimes it's hard to forget that like twitter and instagram and facebook are not real places so sometimes it's like good to go outside and remind yourself that the world does not have a like button and that <laughs> that's the wisdom i have for you today <laughs> then we have <laughs> Ah, foot detox pads oh boy <laughs> these pads are basically something that you stick to the bottom of your feet before you go to bed and then they act as magnets for toxins and heavy metals in your body so when you wake up in the morning and you peel them off there's like this gunk like this black gunk coming out of your foot which is the toxins and the heavy metals coming out of your body it's exactly how it sounds. This is going on the money grab pile, not just because I say so, but because people in the last 10 years, quite a few experiments with these. And basically if you put these pads in water, the black gunk comes out of them. What's happening when you put these on your feet is that during the night, as you're sleeping, your feet sweat and then the sweat reacts with the pads and that's the gunk basically. So there, there's nothing coming out of your body. It's in the pads. It's like tricking you to believe that something is coming out of your body. So they're basically a scam. Now, I'm not a podology expert and I know that there are some pads that have like mint and other ingredients that are supposed to make you feel more relaxed and like help you to go to sleep. I don't know too much about those things. Some people claim that they help them, but these ones claiming to detox your body, uh-uh. Like, no. In fact, there was a brand of these feet detox pads called Kinoki, which was banned by the FTC for the claims that they made um, on these pads. So, no, no. No, 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 no. Next up, I was asked to look at the salt water flush. A salt water flush is basically a mixture of warm water and non-iodized salt. You mix those two and then you drink it and it makes you poop. It has a laxative effect and I believe it's usually prescribed or used for people that suffer from chronic constipation. So then this started being used as a way to cleanse your colon and also to detox your colon because it just flushes everything out. What are my thoughts on this? For the purpose that it's intended, which is to help people with chronic constipation. It does what it's supposed to do, which is to have a laxative effect. However, when we talk about these kind of things, and you know, if you've watched some of my videos that I suffered from chronic bloating, constipation, all those great and wonderful things in the past. And the problem that I have with some of these quick fixes is that they, they really don't fix the root cause. So as a short term fix, it may work if someone is really desperate and if they're being prescribed to do this by someone who understands what their problem is. If they're just doing this to relieve themselves or to cleanse their colon, it can actually be really dangerous. First of all, once you do this, you're supposed to do this on an empty stomach in the morning. And people tell you, don't make plans for the next two to three hours because you're going to be in the toilet. Sounds really glamorous, doesn't it? Aside from <laughs> sounding very glamorous, laxative dependency is actually something that's very real. If you are desperate because you have chronic constipation or you feel bloated or you want to feel flatter and you do this salt water flush and it works, you're going to want to continue to do it, aren't you? Because it works for what you think your problem is. You want to be flat and it makes you flat because it makes you poop your guts. And that's how an eating disorder gets born. So this has all the risks associated with normal, any other kind of laxatives, which is you may be flushing out the food you ate too fast. So you're not allowing your body to absorb all the nutrients properly before they're out of your body. If you flush out more good gut bacteria than bad gut bacteria, the bad gut bacteria can multiply and cause inflammation in your colon, which is exactly what you're trying to avoid, I suppose. Dehydration and electrolyte imbalance is also another thing that needs to be taken in consideration with laxatives. Aside from that, as a detox, I believe the usual claim that's made is that if your poop has toxins that are getting, you know, ready to exit our body and they stay too long in your colon, then those toxins can go back into the bloodstream. That's not really 
a thing. I'm torn be between not on my watch and kind of sus. I know that this is sometimes prescribed to people for their legitimate problems with bowel movements, um, so I'll just put it on the kind of sus pile, just because yes, it can be helpful for some people, but under the wrong advice, it can be dangerous, so it goes on there. Then we have a medical detox. Hear me out first. The reason I put this in here was to show the contrast between the claims on the wellness community and the medical way of looking at detoxes. So a medical detox is usually done to people who are going into recovery for substance abuse like alcohol, drugs, etc. So I'm going to use alcohol as an example. I think we can all agree that alcohol is toxic for us. I know we all drink it, but there's no nutritional need from our body to have alcohol in it, right? When you have a glass of wine, do you need to do a detox to cleanse your body? You don't, right? Your body just metabolizes the alcohol and you go on with your life. So if we agree that we know of a substance that's toxic for us, however, when we take it, we don't actually need to detox it, then how does our body get rid of it? When you drink alcohol, you're really ingesting ethanol. Ethanol gets metabolized into acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is toxic for us. So then what happens is the body metabolizes acetaldehyde into acetate, which is no longer toxic for us, and eventually it just gets broken down into water and carbon dioxide, and that's it. Some of the byproducts of alcohol will come out through our pee, through our sweat, through our breath. If you develop a substance dependency and you try to go cold turkey and quit it from one day to another, those withdrawal symptoms can be so dangerous that people can actually die from them. I'm talking about blood pressure shooting up, seizures, hallucinations, it's quite scary stuff. So if you check into a recovery clinic, they give you medication to mimic the effects of alcohol or whatever substance you're addicted to so that your body thinks that you're still consuming the substance, but they will taper off the quantity day by day so that by the end of the week you don't have as bad of a withdrawal symptoms as, as you would have, so then you can go into therapy and continue recovery. I'm not saying everyone should go for a medical detox, but I just wanted to include it in here to explain the difference between drinking lemon water and how the body metabolizes actual toxic substances. So this one is going straight to the that's the stuff pile because, you know. Next we have detox teas. We can also split detox teas into two broad categories. We have weight loss teas or skinny teas or whatever program teas that have laxatives in them. And those I am dragging into the not on my watch pile. Uh-uh not having any of it. These teas have all the risks that we just talked about for the saltwater flush. Because these are usually marketed as weight loss teas, I would say the laxative dependency of risk on this one is even higher. People are going to be addicted to the feeling of having a flat tummy, even if that means that all they did was poop out their guts. Also not to mention that if you take medication, even if it's just the pill, flushing that out before your body can absorb it means that you're not really absorbing the effects of that medication or the pill. So you know what that means? Say hi to your baby for me. <laughs> then we have another category of detox teas. These detox teas are the ones that don't have laxatives in them. Even if they don't have laxatives in them, they can have a ginormous amount of caffeine, which when ingested in large quantities can have a diuretic effect, which means it triggers your body to expel water through pee and poop. So you'll lose some water weight, which may mean that you may appear to be a little lighter when you step on the scale, but that doesn't really mean that you have burned off any fat or that you have gotten rid of any toxins for that matter. Although most of the detox teas that we see in supermarkets these days, they're just called detox teas because detox is a buzzword that sells. Most of these detox teas now just have ingredients that are known to have some antioxidant properties like ginger and berries and stuff. Those are mostly harmless, but there are some considerations to have with some herbs that may have interactions with drugs or medicines like grapefruit for example or St. John's wort. So it's always good to be careful and remembering that teas, same as other supplements, are not regulated by the FDA for example in the US and it's also been found in the past that some of these detox teas have had dangerous substances mixed into the contents that were not listed on the packaging. So 
If you buy these, at least make sure that you buy them from a brand that you know and trust so that you don't risk any of these things. So these detox teas are going on the kind of sus pile. Some of them are harmless, but after all that I just said, you know, depends on which one you're buying. Okay, people, just hanging there. We're almost getting to the end. So one of you added any kind of juice cleanse and whether or not it makes any sense. There's also different types. So you can have your juicing practices like the, the celery juice, which is drinking juice on top of the rest of your diet. But usually juice cleanses that are sold as a package or as a program, they're usually sold for a number of days, all you consume is the juices that you buy. I searched one of these and I must say that I was utterly shocked. We, we just need to look at this together because, oh my god. For example, they sell a three-day juice cleanse diet and it comes with six juices per day. So every day you just, all you have is six juices. So you get one juice which has apples, cucumber, lemon, water and kale. You get one which is almost the same but with activated charcoal powder. You have one which has beetroot. You have one which has carrot and ginger. And you get one which is mineral water, spirulina and lemon juice. Just reading this, I just get the feeling that it's basically 90% water. And then when you get to the price, the original price is 72 pounds. Four pounds of juice. That's really expensive. So they state our packages contain six juices and drinks per day, approximately 603 calories per day. However, <laughs> when I look into it and I start looking at the nutritional label they show, this first juice is 33 calories. This one is 36. This one is 37. This one is 42. And this one is 37. But then if you go down and you go to the ingredients, you have the same tables again, except, oh wait, actually the last juice is only two calories. Do, do you see the problem? When you add all of this up, it's not 600 calories, it's like 200 calories. It's more like 600 calories for the three days, not per day. Why do they promote this as weight loss? Because you're basically starving yourself. So if you get to drink more vitamins and minerals from, from these juices, fine. You will be really hungry. So these products, I would say, not, not on my watch. Is there any wonder that there's some research suggesting that there's a relation between juicing and developing eating disorders? If you have a juicer at home and you make your own natural fruit or veggie juice and you have that along with a varied diet, no problem. I'm not going to say that it detoxes you because it doesn't, but it does promote the good functioning of your body so that your body can detox itself. If we're talking about these kinds of juices, no problem. If we're talking about these kinds of programs that make you starve yourself under the illusion that it's going to flush something out of your body and can actually make you develop an eating disorder, then not on my watch. Let me know if there's any other detoxes that you've heard of and that you're not too sure about. Leave your questions for me below for the q and I'll be doing. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Bye!